Hey, Liz Ness here. In this video, I'm going to show you the five steps, kind of five focuses that I take to take photos, sort of ordinary snapshot photos, and turn them into something that looks a little bit more professional, like this uh, portrait that I did of my sister-in-law. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I brought a photo in, and this is of my sister-in-law at one of her daughter's weddings. And I just happened to be sort of passing by very quickly and she put the fan up. She's a really, she's a really fun gal. And she put the fan up and just looked at me as a sort of a funny uh, gesture. And I couldn't help myself. I immediately went to work snapping and as I was running by. <laughs> so it wasn't until later on when I saw the picture that I thought, wow, you know, this actually would make a great portrait shot. It's got some great catch lights in her eyes and um, you know the way she's sitting and she's looking at it uh, just is really compelling but there's a lot of stuff around it so the first the first order of business really is choosing the subject and in that I'm choosing my sister-in-law and her name is KJ I'm gonna choose her and not her at the wedding so my subject is just KJ which means I'm gonna make certain decisions to bring this in and make it a nice tight portrait of KJ the next thing I'm going to do uh, is work from a copy. So I want to preserve that original so I can go back and look at it uh, throughout if I need to. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the layer there. And then the next thing I'm going to do is adjust the composition. So I have a little helper tool and I will make this available um, in the description for you too. Let's see, now where did I put that though? <laughs> I think it's under uh, development. There we go. Yes, it's a thirds guide that I like to use here. And so I'm going to create another layer on top here and I have a nice light color that'll work just fine. Um, and okay, so let's see, let's dial this prime. Let's probably bet that that's about the good size there. So I'm just going to tap in there and now I'm going to go ahead and select my transform tool. I'm going to rotate twice and then I'm going to select freeform here and I'm just going to play around with this grid a little bit so that I can really see what I've got going on here. I want to keep her eyes centered because I want this to be a very calm sort of picture in but really focused in on her as a subject. Um, let's see here and I kind of want to preserve some of the height of this picture definitely where her head is. So something like that maybe. Um, let's see and maybe actually maybe bring this in just a little bit. I don't want to cut off her hand because I don't you know, want to have any dismembered parts there. <laughs> okay, that kind of looks good for a composition. I kind of want to bring it in like that. Um, and so I'm going to cut off some of the bottom here, but just really kind of focus in. I, I want to keep her hand, but I'm going to actually uh, downplay that later on when I deal with light. Okay, so that, that looks good for um, for where I want, how I want to crop this. So once I'm satisfied with the position of the thirds, I'm going to turn off the transform. And now I'm going to go over and tap the wrench and canvas and crop and resize. And then what I'm going to do is drag the edge of the picture here, which is really the crop the crop lines, and match that up corner to corner with my um, thirds guide that I've been using. Okay, something like that. Okay, that looks about right. So when you're satisfied with that, you can just go ahead and tap done. Okay, and now my canvas is cropped the way I want it to be. So I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and discard by d deleting that uh, thirds helper tool that I just was using. For our next step, we're going to dial in the focus. We're going to make some color and light manipulation so that that just really kind of sends our attention towards KJ's eyes. And we're also going to be re removing distractions specifically in the background and make some, making some corrections in the foreground so that anything that might pull our eye away from what we where we want the eye to go, we're going to get rid of. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, start masking out what I don't want, but I want to have black behind it. So I'm going to go ahead and select that first layer. I'm going to add a new layer and then I'm going to go select black and then I'm just going to drop it in there. And then I'm going to come up to this top layer here and I'm going to tap it and I'm going to select mask. I'm going to change the color of my pen here to black and then I'm going to go and select um, one of the brushes that comes with under airbrush. I'm just going to select that soft brush and I'm going to dial it up just a little bit to get started. And then I just want to make sure that my layer mask is selected and it is. And so then I'm just going to start uh, kind of basically I'm painting out 
the background of my picture with, through the mask and then um, revealing the black that's underneath it. Um, and so I'm just going to do this and you can keep uh, using black to hide and white to reveal in this case. So, okay, and I'm going to, of course, make the, the brush a little smaller and get a little bit more refined in just a moment. But I like to take some big swags here at first. Okay, now we're going to bring this brush down a little bit and we're going to get a little bit more careful here. Okay. Okay, and if you make a mistake, let's go ahead and make this a little bit larger so you can see what's going on here. But if you make mistakes, all you have to do is tap the color and go back to white and then that basically hides um, the background reveals the foreground again. So we're white reveals and black is hiding. pretty good for masking. But one of the things I'm going to do later on is I'm going to put a little bit of shadow right over here. Um, in fact, I might even just go ahead and do that now with a lighter color. I'm going to go with this gray. Ooh. Okay, maybe I, maybe I was already lighter. <laughs> Let's go lighter there. Okay, there we go. That seems a little bit better. So it's toning it down without going crazy here. And uh, because of the airbrush, that helps. Kinda, okay, we just kind of want to keep that round shape there. Okay, that's good. All right, and I might even want to actually go black all just a little bit more on the edges here. Let's just see how that looks. There we go. Okay, so that kind of helps create an illusion. You know that there's something back there, but it kind of creates this illusion of of more narrowness so that actually looks a little bit more realistic and a little less obvious it doesn't draw our eye there because we don't really want our eye to be drawn there we want our eye to be drawn to her specifically okay that looks pretty good we're 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 getting through this um one of the, the next things that i need to do um is uh so we're dialing in the focus and we've just removed some distractions and we've played a little bit with the light here um the next thing i want to look at is color so right in here this fan is actually pretty thin and you can sort of see through it so you can see the shoulder but I don't want that I, I want to get rid of that effect so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let's see I want to make sure that I have that layer selected um, and then I'm gonna take this little smudge tool and I'm gonna smudge down the colors let's see how I want to make this pretty small actually I think I want to change my pen here and I am going to go uh, let's see where's calligraphy there it is I'm just gonna use the mono line and I actually go pretty small here and Ooh, that's too small. Okay, so, oh, and that's, I'm actually, I, I don't want that, I want smudge. So if I hold it down, I'll get the same brush that I just had, so that should be the monoline, great, okay. So there we go. So I wanna drag down the color that's already there and pull it down. And I think I'm gonna make my brush just a little bit bigger here, because that's a little hard to deal with there. Okay, oops. Okay. Oh yeah, that looks better. pretty good so let's back out of that take a look okay that's looking pretty good I like that okay so um, we've done some color corrections we've uh, 
we've done some light corrections, made it a little bit darker over here so our eye wasn't just immediately pulled to that. And, um, and we're kind of ready now, I think, to go ahead and make the final color adjustment, which has to do with, I, I'm gonna go ahead and create a, um, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and mix these, merge all of these together. So I'm gonna tap them. Oops, sorry, tap this layer. And I'm gonna go ahead and merge down. And then I'm gonna create a copy. And with that copy, I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna select adjustments and I am gonna go ahead and uh, select gradient map here and layer. And I have a black and white already set here. So um, when I pull the dark in, it'll darken sort of the overall, you know, darker um, uh, background black colors in and it'll make them darker. And if I pull the white, it'll take the highlights and make them light, oops, lighter. Ooh, I like that. Okay, that really reveals her eyes. But it kind of blows out the bottom here, so I need to think about what I want to do there. So I think I'm going to actually handle this in just a slightly different way. Um, now that I have this, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go over to Curves. Apply that to the whole layer, and then I can play specifically with certain areas where I want a brighter and uh, darker. And I want that mid, this is more of a mid-tone area, so I want to kind of make it not too light, make it a little bit darker, so I can just pull this, like, make it more of an S-curve, which also increases the contrast here. Let's, let's pull this down so we can really look at it. And I'm just trying to decide how much dark. I kind of really want to leave so that there are some details here in this fan, because I think that's interesting. It also kind of pulls your eye up in. But the thing that I care about the most is how bright her face is here versus how bright this is, because I don't want it to just start here. I kind of want it to start here and kind of go down. So that's what I'm looking at, really. Getting a better balance and all of that. OK. OK, I think there's one more uh, light correction that I need to make, and so we're going to do that, too. OK, that looks like a nice balance, actually, right there. So it's just slightly curved up in the whites. All right. I'm going to give her a little bit more light up in her eyes with sort of a fake fill light uh, effect. So what I'm going to do is create another layer on top of this one. And I'm going to select white. And then I'm going to go back to my airbrush. Where was that? Oh, it takes me forever to find it. There we go. OK, and then I'm going to bring it down to, well, probably about like that. OK, I'm going to go ahead and uh, select soft light to begin with here so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to go ahead and tap right in here and kind of lighten up her face. Okay. Now, this is a great effect, but you don't want it on full full, full blast. <laughs> so what I really want to do is uh, dial this down to probably about 30 is usually uh, something pretty good, maybe even 25 or so. Okay, and then turn it on and off so you can see the effect. So what it does is it kind of takes away some of the contrast of her of her eyes there. So you have to be really careful with this effect. Um, I'm also going to try hard light instead. Try a couple different ones. Overlay maybe. Oh, there we go. Okay, overlay is a better choice here because uh, uh, it doesn't mess with the contrast so much. And it helps lighten it without messing with the contrast. Which, ooh, I really like that. That really pulls you into her eyes, which is really cool. So I'm still thinking, though, that I might like it just a little bit darker down here where the fan is. So again, I can really direct the attention right to my subject where I want, want it to be. So I'm going to create another layer. And I'm going to go with black this time. Same airbrush that we've been using. I'm going to dial that way up, though. And then I'm going to go ahead and kind of darken in here. I don't want it to be too dark. I mean, we're going to dial this down, too. But I kind of want to see how this will play out a little bit. So most of the fan. And then, of course, everything underneath here. OK, so now. Let's start with uh, multiply and then dial this down a bit. OK, I'm actually thinking this is probably going to be better as either an overlay or a hard light. Well, maybe soft light. OK, also, once again, that looks, actually, that looks pretty good. But it's not quite giving me the darker that I want right there. So I'm kind of thinking what other, hmm. Luminosity. Let's try that. Just kind of 
slowly dial it back. Probably also around 30, usually about 30% is about all you want. In this case, I think maybe even more like 20. Okay, so let's turn that off and on and see what we think. Okay, actually, I think even maybe less, maybe more like 15 or 10. Let's try that. Okay, yeah, okay, I like that balance, that's that's better. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So now let's go ahead, um, I'm gonna bring this first original layer up on top so that we can kind of look at things just a little bit um, before we do our very last step. Um, so let's see, this is what it looks like now that we've been playing with it and this is what it was before. So definitely made a huge improvement in terms of like really focusing in on my subject. Okay, I really like this. So I'm gonna bring this one back down to the bottom. And now for the last step, we're going to sharpen our image. Okay, so what we're gonna do is go ahead and create a copy of everything onto a new layer. So how we do that is we go over to our wrench, tap add, and then tap copy canvas. And once it's copied, tap paste. And that should, and then we're gonna go ahead and tap the transform because we don't need to move it but that should place a new image on the very top layer and that's the one that we can sharpen so with that layer selected we're going to go over to our um, our magic wand there and we're going to uh, tap a uh, sharpen layer and then we're going to draw across here and just kind of pay attention to what's happening with the sharpening layer okay I'm going to go ahead and sharpen the whole way um, and when I'm satisfied with that, I can tap the magic wand again. And then I'm going to mask this one out. So first, let's go ahead and let's look at that sharpening. Oh, yeah. You can really see it in the eyes. And that's actually where I really want to sharpen the hair and the eyes. But I want to be very careful not to sharpen underneath her eyes here because those are lines and none of the, none of the lines that are on the face. We don't want to sharpen those. Uh, we just want to sharpen sort of the hair and then her eyes. Okay. So let's go ahead and turn that uh, visibility back on and we're going to tap it and we're going to tap mask and then we're going to go actually invert that and then with white selected we're going to tap our brush and select the soft brush here again um, and then let's see we're going to dial that down a ways yeah okay I just want to make sure that my layer mask is the one that I actually have selected and it is Okay, and so then I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to start with her hair first, and I, uh, I'm going to just paint over the top of that and bring some of that, uh, of that uh, detail in by, you know, painting it in there. So in this case, white is revealing. Okay, and now I'm going to go on her eyebrows, and I'm going to do her eyes. Ooh, yeah. Okay, it seems a little subtle, but it's actually doing a really good job. Oh, wow, that looks really great. Okay. So that's kind of how that looks. Let's go ahead and um, turn it on and off again. It's really subtle. <laughs> um, okay, let's see, let me make this bigger so that you can see what's going on here. Okay, that's on and off. You can see it's very blurry, very clear. I really like that. I think it looks really good. Uh, yep, I think that looks really good. So. When you're satisfied, then you can just save your image and, and you're good to go. So thanks very much for watching this video. And if you liked it, please be sure to like the video and also subscribe to the channel and ring that bell so you get notified when new videos become available. Uh, meanwhile, I hope you have a great time trying out these uh, tips that I shared today. And I hope your day is amazing.